Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good night, all depends on what part of the world you're in today. So, my original video that I'm going to do, and I'm still going to do it, so Peggy, 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 you are not getting away, I'm coming with your video next, mm -hmm. maybe in another day or so, mm -hmm. or sooner than that, so you're not getting away. But I want to touch on the topic now about the whole meet and greet saga concerning um, Miss D and, and Majesty. And I want to give my opinion and my input on it. So I'm going to play a little bit at the, of the video. And as I go along, I'm going to give you my point of view on what I think went down. And then me look on it and me say, a film brand, so, um, me no need to talk to Chris first, um, Beverly, uh, where your name, Rochelle Pearson, this was done on social media, and person, this one, so that I'm and guys, there's times I'm going to speed up the video, because I'm not going to play the whole thing, because if not, my whole entire, um, video is going to be probably take two hours by the time i finish playing and say what i have to say but um i'm going to just summarize real quickly um beginning of what she's um, kind of saying now she comes on and she's saying about the fact that um you know people was in her inbox telling her um you know them never like what chris do i know chris wear um dmg brand i mean not dmg but ymk brand instead of her brand and he did not come in all yellow he came into black and people was really upset about it and her donors is upset about it and her donors is upset upset about it now listen to the key word okay i want you guys to follow and listen to the key word the key word is my donors was upset about it. now Donna didn't come out to speak on the topic because of what her plankers or her followers were saying to her. Because I'm sure, even though she's saying she didn't, you know, see the comment, she didn't read the comment, um, she didn't know what was going on and, you know, all of that. I honestly believe, Donna, um, that you did knew what was going on. You did know about the controversy probably at the meet and greet that was going on because later on down in your video, you kind of explained and said um, people was in your ears already at the meet and greet to the point where you even pulled yourself away and went and sat at the table with Natalie. So yeah, you were aware that there was a controversy going on, but you chose was to ignore it at the time because of course, you know, um, the whole movement was going great. The meet and greet was going great everybody was having a good time it was a really a good success i'm sure you were selling a lot of t-shirt natalie was selling a lot of food so you know money was making and that's all was important to you at the moment is the fact that long as money is making you did not care about whatever controversy was going on at the meet and greet and that is my honest opinion that i'm saying that right yeah so anyway so you choose to ignore it. And I think what I'm going to do, because I think I listened to enough of her live and enough of her video so I can summarize. And anybody that wants to go back and watch her whole entire live, then go ahead and watch it on Donna Go page on YouTube. You're free to do that. Um, so I'm just going to summarize everything. Um, so you chose to ignore the controversy that was actually going on at the moment because again money was making that is all this whole thing you know um actually boils down to the opportunity to use the whole yellow bus movement you know which i have no issues with whatsoever and again you turn lemon into lemonade that is what you do that is what you do best look at mixy mixy look at um double decker look at the other things that you use and turn it into lemonade so it's something that you you do on a regular so it's nothing surprising that you did use the whole yellow bus situation um you know, and turn it into lemonade. And at the same time, like I said, God was in it to use, even though the intention, um, some people are saying your intention is wrong and you're mocking, you know, the mental illness and you're mocking this and mocking that. Like I said in my last video, even with all of that, God will use anything, any situation, any scenario to make sure his work get done. And the work that got done was the fact that this mental institution that in your um, video at the time, the worker said to you, but Donna, I had reached out to you in your inbox 
three weeks or two weeks prior, but you never respond. So if it's this, if, if this is God's way to make sure um, that mental institution received, you know, the help and support that they probably really, really needed, then that is what happened. And that's why I go on to say that, you know, Tina Chin coming out and saying about, you know, the yellow bus or our house looking like a yellow bus was not a coincidence. God would use anybody to make sure his glory, his work, his mission get accomplished. And that mission was accomplished. So anything anyone else get out of it, whether she use it now to be making money off of that whole concept, that's between her, that's between God, that's between, it's, it's neither here nor there for me, right? So yes. So it become now, the whole Yellow Bus movement have become now um, somewhat of a money-making um thing for her and, and, and for everyone else because as you can see even your majesty chris jumped on it call it the, you know the yellow bus um sale he's having on his website because you know that's what he does he jumps on the back of donna every chance that he get he rides it right he rides the wind he rides her back to get where he wants to go so everybody knew that he would have jumped on it and and now want to make money off of it himself right yes yeah, so that's what he does because that's what he does best right all right, so let's get back to this now. So, Donna, yeah, you did know and you were aware of what was going on and with the whole controversy that was going on with Chris at that moment. And, you know, when I put up my status on my community page um, yesterday that say, you know, hypocrisy, um, I've seen so much hypocrisy in that particular day um, to, to, to actually last me a lifetime because so many aspects of what was going on was full of hypocrisy because even at that moment if you was hearing all that controversy I feel you know if you and, and Chris supposed to be you know quote unquote brothers which you know in your video and your live just now I noticed you didn't use that term anymore you use friend now right you say Chris is my friend or whatever I never Never once in this live, um, you know, I didn't listen all the way to the end. So let's be correct on that. So I don't know, maybe toward the end of her video, she might have used the word brother. But throughout the whole live that she did concerning the whole Chris situation, she never once used the word brother anymore. She used the word friend or associate, right? So yeah, so we, we can already see where this relationship is going. And rightfully so, because it's time enough that people... People put hypocrisy away, take off your blinders and really see people for who they really are and speak the truth upon that. So, yeah, it's going in the right direction where eyes are being opened and people are coming out now with their true feelings. And even if they don't want to, it shows in their actions. Right. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, let's get back to this now. So, yeah. So if you and him as so-called um, brother, sister, whatever relationship, I'm sure by now you would have been able in the midst of the meet and greet with all this controversy going on. And yes, you were aware of it to pull Chris to the side and have a conversation with him, have a conversation with him and say, hey, brother, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm hearing a lot of negativity in my ears about the fact that you came here in your YMK and you also came in here in black when I am, um, uh, um, you know, my whole theme was, uh, was about yellow and the yellow school bus. Can you explain to me why you make this decision to have done so? Now, if you had pulled them aside as quote unquote, you know, brother and sister, then you would have heard what you heard on your live today, which is him coming out to explain why he did the YMK and not the DMJ. You would have heard him at that moment, he would have gave you, um, you know, the understanding of what went down and what happened and, you know, why he wore that. So, yeah. So once you got that explanation and the way you seem to accept the explanation that he's giving you on live, you could have accepted the, the explanation at that moment 
also. And if you have, and you truly in your heart believe that he's telling you the truth about his intention of why he wore YMK and also wear black, then I don't think you would have been able to come out and make this live this morning, right? Because you would have understood. So therefore, even if you came and read all that negativity in your phone, you would have just disregarded because you already got your answer from Chris at the meet and greet. But Donna, you didn't do that, right? You kind of pull yourself away, like you said, and you went and sat with Natalie and you were pondering these things and you had it in your heart to say, hey, you know what? I really, true enough, Chris shouldn't have done that, that Chris shouldn't have done this. But you didn't do that. You decide now to come out and you make a life. Now, people, in me saying all of this, I am not giving anyone wrong, all right? I am only dissecting the information that I've listened to, right? And me dissecting it and getting my own understanding and giving my own opinion is what I'm trying to do. So you came out and you make a live. And Donna, again, you didn't make the live for your plankers because you already knew, like I said, that your plankers had an issue and a problem with Chris doing what he did and you never um you know um say entertain um their negativity or entertain their complaint or their problem and this is one thing that I need plunkers to understand Donna love you guys because of the support you give her she does not look beyond past that part. So when you guys are coming out and defending and cussing for her and carrying on with yourself and, you know, just doing the most for her, just know that she don't care about that part. The part that she continued to care about is the fact of your financial support. Long as she could put a brand out there and you can run and buy it. Long as she could put her cake up there and you guys will run and buy it. Anything she does, you will come out and support it is all she's looking at. So don't think she's going to take your feelings in consideration. Don't think she's going to always want to listen to the advices that you guys give her. That's why you continue to say in your comment section, Donna, you don't listen. Donna, we've been trying to tell you. Auntie Donna, we always are tell you, but you're not listening. Auntie Donna, please listen. Auntie Donna, stop it. You need to do uh, and listen to us. You've been saying that for years, Plankers. And if you notice, she doesn't listen to you guys. Because at the end of the day, you guys are not there to dictate to her what she should do, what she should say, and how she should say it. You guys are just there for the financial support, and you need to stay in your place. Plankers, know your lane. Know your assignment. And stay in your place. You're only there as a financial support. You're not there to give advice. And that's why she ignore you guys when it comes to giving advice. So back to this now. So Donna, you didn't listen to your Plankatarian's complaint or their anger or how they felt about the fact that, you know, they felt that Chris was disrespecting the program. He was disrespecting and interjecting himself in your meet and greet and trying to take away your shine. And you're right. He cannot take away your shine. You are absolutely right with that. He's trying very hard, but it's not going to work because at the end of the day, if anyone is to pick you or pick majesty, they are going to pick you. And Chris knows that. So he know he cannot take away your shine, but can he try to get a piece of it because Chris looked like he would be satisfied with just a little piece, you know, and we take what a little piece him can get and he will run with it. Yeah, so him not look for take your shine. Him knowing cannot take your shine, okay? It's only one Miss D, right? Yeah. So anyway, so back to this now. So when you came out and you make this live now, this morning, you did not make it for your Plankaterians. You did not make it because you want to pacify them. You want to let them know you understand their pain and their anger. No, you simply made it for your donors. 
Because once your donors is upset and once your donors does not agree with something, you know you cannot disappoint your donors. And I'm not talking about your little it, itty bitty donors. I'm not talking about your little twenty dollar donors or your little ten dollar donor or your little five dollar super chat donors or your little. Yeah, I'm not talking about those donors. You could probably care less what they say. You are addressing your big donors, the one that makes the biggest impact in your financial. Um, gain or any financial gain that you know between your cake sale, you know, slippers and t shirts, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Those are the donors that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones that when you're running a charity drive, uh, probably majority, maybe 80% of that money comes from your big donors, even by themselves. Those are the donors you made that life for this morning because you needed to pacify them. You need to let them know that you hear them, that you understand their pain and you're not going to ignore it because even one of the, um, the text message that you read, you read it from your donor saying, Donna, I will be disappointed if you ignore this one. So you made that video for them. And that's okay. It's a good move, Donna. That is what a business person does. A business person has to be very calculative in their move. A business person, a real successful business person, which you are, is very calculative. And you have to be when you want to be successful. You have to pick and choose your battles very wisely with the people that have the biggest purse and brings you the most business. Yes, that is what you have to do. So you did a good thing. You did a good thing when you finally came out to address the situation because of your donors that requested it, right? Okay. So it so happened that Majesty calls in because, of course, you know, he have his little, you know, royals out there that's on social media that's watching you. And I'm sure they immediately sent him the telegram. Come, come, come over to Donna Go Live. She's talking about you. Yes. And then we say, oh, and then run, and then come over, and then hear a little bit of what I want, and then decide to call in, because that's what he does. He does that best, right? Because he's not going to call you privately, of course not, because there is no privacy with him anymore. And I think the whole LaDonna thing opened up a lot of people's eyes, and including yours, Donna, even though your eyes been open and you've been kind of watching and observing, but it really came to life for you and it really became a reality for you when he did what he did to LaDonna and everybody know how much you love LaDonna so I know it really hurts you to your core for what he did to her and especially seeing how hurt she was but anyways he called in and he, he, he say um you know he wants to know what's going on and, and, and you go on to express you know what was going on and he come out and try to explain himself of why he did what he did and again that explanation could have been done privately Donna if you had addressed him at the meet and greet when it first started to come out right that there was a issue but anyway it's being done on social media that's okay you know just to show that you know whether or not you feel that he's your brother you guys are close or not you're still willing to come out and pacify your biggest donors by making it public again strict um a good business move for you but anyway now chris let me address you now for a minute. Um, Donna, wait one second. I'm going to come back to you. But Chris, let me address you now. So, Chris, you know them always say, uh, what them say? Um, where bones are not provided, dogs are not 
invited. Now, I'm not calling anybody a dog, but I am saying what the, um, the, the little quote or the little motto say, right? Now, who invited you? Who invited you? You you are a so-called influencer, right? You don't you don't influence me, but you know you have your audience that think you do, so they call you an influencer, you know, whatever you are, Chris. I don't even know how to say who you are anymore. But anyways, um, so Donna didn't reach out to you, of course, because she never told you she was going to Canada. So that's a red flag. You should have seen that red flag, right? And you should have took notice of the fact that she didn't even tell you she was going to Canada. So that should have been a little hint to you that you, uh, you know, wouldn't have really been invited to the meet and greet, right? And even if it's after she went to Canada, she probably came up with the idea or someone gave her the idea to have have this meet and greet, Chris. Don't you think at this point you already now know she's in Canada, right? Because it's already now already been out. Don't you think she would have picked up that phone or reached out to you and said, brother, this is what I'm planning. I'm planning a meet and greet and I would love for you to be there. She didn't do that. So again, that should have been a red flag for you to know you were not invited, right? But no, Chris, you being Chris, you just had to still insert yourself. You wanted to be a, a part of the DMG yellow bus movement so bad and you have to make sure your presence was also known along with her because, again, you like to ride her coattail. And you like to get some of whatever limelight she has and whatever success that she have. You always seem like you want just a little piece of it. So what you do, you jump up. And I know you pay good money for that ticket because you say you bought it literally the day before. Anyone knows that when you buy a ticket so close to your fly or departure time, you're going to pay mm, a good piece of buck for that ticket. So we know you paid a good piece of buck for that ticket, right? And even you yourself say how you lost business and money just to be there. No, Chris, you lost business and you lost money because you saw an opportunity to jump on her bag wagon there and and, and and make money. You may say to yourself, oh, but I didn't bring any t-shirt for sale. Oh, but me never come there with nothing for sale. So how am I trying to, you know, um, you know, interject myself into taking away any shine or any, you know, money or attention from her brand. Chris, you know what you were doing. You wearing the YMK with the school bus. You were there to advertise your t-shirt. And your hoodies. Let's get it right. Let's get it correct. It's like a billboard, right? A billboard will have the product on the billboard. And obviously, when people see it, they're going to say, wow, I love that. I want to go buy it. Let me jump on his website and go order me one. Because I'm sure, Chris, you have them up for sale. Let's not get it twisted. Not everybody is a idiot or a fool. We can see right through certain people and we see right through you and your intentions. Your intentions and that's the reason why you made YMK and not DMG because you were there with your little small crew to advertise your product and your product was that hoodie and those t-shirts and that's what you did silently but not silent enough because enough people saw through it you're a hypocrite i've been saying it from day one i will not stay and anybody could come out and say oh it's because and no i call a spade a spade 
speed and he's a speed. I'm jealous and I'm bad mind and I'm very envious of Miss D's success. And every opportunity and chance he get, he will start to want to ride on her back just to get a little piece of that. But you don't understand, Chris, if she is to make a hundred percent and you even take two percent or three percent out of that, you still robbing her. You're still dipping into her success and her financial gain because you're taking a little bit of it. Why can't you just let her have that one full hundred percent? People, think about it. You guys are not fools. Chris followers, open up your eyes and see what this man is doing. He is calculative also, but the thing, the difference between his calculation and her calculation is too different. And I'm not going to be the one to tell you what the difference is. If you're smart enough, you will know what the difference between both of their calculation when it comes to business. Chris, you have to stop it. You got on the wrong bus this time. It's time for you to get off the bus. Your time is over. You're not to be trusted. You're not loyal. You're full of jealous and bad mind. You have a lot of evil ways about you and it's not going to change. It's only going to get worse. And if Miss D is smart enough, she will realize that she has nothing to lose to let you go. She has nothing to lose whatsoever. You, Chris, on the other hand, have a lot to lose if she let you go. Guys, that's all I'm going to say on this matter.